And so if we go to the first topic, um, this is what is the impact of these bispecific antibodies, the bites. And this cartoon shows for everyone uh, what is involved. This en engagement of the T cell is uh, produced by the bispecific antibody which uh, connects the T cell to the myeloma and right now the commonest target is the BCMA on the myeloma which is engaging the T cell and as you can see here in the cartoon this triggers the release of a variety of uh, cytokines and the like interleukin 2, 6 and also perforin and granzyme B these that allow uh, the, 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 the contribute to the death of the myeloma. So this is uh, uh, very, very important. And so here at ASH, uh, we had the early results, uh, the phase one, two results with the AMG420 bite. Uh, and uh, this was presented here to show the impact of the different doses, uh, dose escalation. And what you can see in this first chart is that the higher doses, uh, 200, 400, 800 micrograms per day, which you can see at the bottom left, uh, the blue and the purple uh, indicating rather deep and sustained uh, cell reduction with these higher doses. So really quite uh, impressive results with these early data. And so uh, the AMG420, an anti BCMA bite uh, induces MRD negative CRs in this relapse refractory population. And so this initial study is from a, a Euro European team uh, led in this case by uh, Dr. Top from uh, uh, Würzburg in, in Germany. And so the first question is, uh, are these uh, data encouraging? And, and what do we think about the future for this type of strategy using bites versus what we'll talk about in a moment, uh, the CAR T-cell therapy. So, so maybe, Maravi, you could comment first. How did this uh, set of data strike you with the, with the bites? I think that the bites, so these uh, monoclonal antibodies targeting both the plasma cells and at the same time the T-cells, I think that are really very encouraging. So we had the opportunity to see preliminary results of the phase one trial including, of course, a small subgroup of patients, relapse and refractory myeloma. All of them had been previously treated with proteasome inhibitors and imid. Not all patients had been previously treated with monoclonal antibody, but most of them had received either daratumumab or ilotuzumab. Right. And so different doses were evaluated. And so, as you mentioned, the maximum tolerated dose was 400 milligrams. And at that dose, I would say that almost all patients not only responded, but uh, achieved the complete response and minimal residual disease negative. Yes. It's true that, so I think that we have to wait to have longer follow-up because uh, we need uh, to know the duration of the response, and especially the median progression free survival. survival. But mm -hmm. so, these uh, efficacy results, I think, that are encouraging, and together with the safety profile, because uh, so at uh, 800 milligrams, so there, there was uh, a dose-limiting toxicity, I think that uh, a neurological adverse event, but uh, generally speaking, I think that the toxicity profile is That's also good. acceptable. Good. So we will see how these uh, new monoclonal antibodies, the bites monoclonal antibodies, will compete with the CAR T cells. Because yes. uh, so at the end, the bite is a monoclonal antibody that we can take from the pharmacy and we can yes. deliver immediately to the patient. Absolutely, off the shelf, as they say. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so and I actually think that's one of the critical pieces here. I mean, yeah. if we are trying to employ the patient's own immune system and now as we understand the science behind T cells better and being able to engage them, um, that, that's a fantastic step forward. So having a different mechanism of action in of itself is critical. But in comparison to CAR T cell therapy, which I know we'll come to and is, is very encouraging, it's the access is an issue. It's not yes. even so much the cost. I mean, if we have difficulty getting access to a simple autologous stem cell transplant, being able to have a patient go through the apheresis and then the quality checks on it and then producing the T cells, uh, producing the, the CAR Ts and then reinfusing the patient. That's, that's fairly involved and it'll right. work very well for a lot of patients, but there are a lot of patients who won't be able to get that. And this bite might be an opportunity to employ that method of engaging the T cell 
without having to go through all of that. As right. you said, so Brian, simpler. the off the shelf. Yeah, off, off the, the shelf, shelf, simpler. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> okay, but but obviously early days, and we just have to see how this goes forward. But uh, uh, my sense is that uh, many people did seem to be quite encouraged, and uh, we'll see how things work out. So you definitely packed the house. This yes. presentation was just barely over an hour ago, yeah. and uh, there wasn't a seat left in the house yeah. to listen yes, to. Yes, everyone's pretty interested to yeah. see uh, these early results.